It's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you moms out there. Nobody can replace a mom. That is for sure. I was adopted at three weeks old, but my entire life I thought about my birth mother. Her name was Deborah Ann Collins, and she named me Kimberly Page Collins. And then I was adopted, and they put a white gown on me, and my brother was jumping up and down saying, Let's take her home! Let's take her home! <laughs> they didn't know what they were adopting, now did they? I always say it like this. It was like they were bringing home a stick of dynamite. You know, traditionally women are supposed to be the quiet, meek, stay in the kitchen type of women. But there's warriors in the Bible. There are women that were prophets and prophesying. There are women leaders in the Bible. And when God called me to preach, my son was eight years old. When I graduated from Bible school, he was 13. At the bottom of the stairs of the whole church at the Brownsville Assembly of God with roses in front of everybody. And I remember my mother saying to me how she invested into me and she expected a return on her investment. So what I did for my mom to show her fruit of my ministry was not necessarily send her videos of me preaching or newspaper articles. I gave her magnets to cover her refrigerator from around the world. Praise God. But a funny note, three years ago, I was singing and exercising in Armenia, and I called it Praiser Size. And I remember my mother saying to me, uh, I think it was in 2020, she said, I saw a video of you on YouTube. It suggested it to me. And you were like teaching uh, these men to exercise while you were singing. I was like, oh yeah, that was Armenia. <laughs> we were on lockdown and I was bored out of my mind. So I left the house, you know, because we were allowed to exercise. So I turned it into praiser size. Come on, lift up those legs. Come on. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. It's interesting being a woman street preacher for 22 years. And my son... Turn with me in Matthew 12, if you'd like to know, and then we'll go to Matthew 10. I told my son, son, I want you to experience at least one year, just a season of your life with me while I do street ministry, okay? Mom's not going to make you go every week for years and years, but just give me one season and I remember there was a, a night I was out there preaching and I was on top of a ladder, people. And I was preaching on Halloween. And I was preaching Deuteronomy about witchcraft. And how it was an abomination to God. Yes, and I was shouting against Harry Potter and this lady comes up, and she shoves the Bible in my nose. Ow! That hurt. And I looked over at my son that had the video camera. He was videotaping his mom. I, and he had just turned the camera off. I was like, you turned the camera off? You didn't get the punch? Didn't get the punch, people.
you got to keep those cameras rolling because you never know in street ministry what's going to happen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Matthew 12, starting in 46. While he was talking to the multitudes. Come on now. Jesus was talking to the multitudes. Behold, his mother and brothers stood outside seeking to speak with him. The man's busy. He's in his office. He's a world changer. He's busy. But his mom and his brothers were outside wanting to speak with him. Then one said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside. Come on now. Let me stop right there. Just because you're called to preach doesn't mean your family's going to clap and cheer and be on the inside. Notice they were on the outside looking in. Come on, that'll preach. Look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak with you. Words are powerful. What do they want to say? <laughs> Not everybody that wants to seek you and find you wants to tell you uh, something that goes along with the will of God for your life. That'll preach too. So you don't need to say yes to everybody that wants to seek you or see you or meet you. Sometimes you got to say no, like the wise virgins said to the foolish virgins. Another story, Matthew 25. Back to Jesus and his mama. It's Mother's Day. <laughs> but he answered and said to the one who told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand towards his disciples. To his disciples. Jesus stretched out his hand towards his disciples. Come on now. They were on the inside. Close to him already. And said, here, my mother and my brothers for whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Praise the Lord. This is not traditional Mother's Day messages. <laughs> but if you're called to be a street preacher, living on the edge, on the front lines, firing your gospel gun, come on now. You better learn these scriptures. You better learn them. Matthew 10. Now, if you want to go even deeper, go to John chapter 2 where he turned water into wine. I think he called his mom woman instead of mother. Let's see. Let's start with 32. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him will I also confess before my Father in heaven. Whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and this will be tested. This will be tested. And he who does not take up his cross, that's going to be tested too. Not just your family, but yourself does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life 
will lose it. He who loses his life for my sake will find it. So praise the Lord. There is your Mother's Day message. Jesus pointed to his disciples. God bless you.